Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So right here we just have some practice clips of me and my friend Marco uh, training together on the indoor hard courts, the really slick ones that I talked about in the past. Um, turns out actually this time I didn't really have such a bad problem seeing the ball uh, and I'm figuring out now it's uh, mostly, not mostly, but it, it has at least something to do with uh, the amount of screen time I have before uh, playing on a dimly lit court. So the more that I'm on my computer, more that I'm on my phone, uh, it seems like my eyes are getting strained a little bit and it's making it harder for me to see at long distance when I get onto a, a dimly lit area. Uh, so I need to really recognize that and accept that unfortunately in that if I have to go play a practice or play a match on indoors that my phone and computer are just not going to be used at all. So I give myself the best chance of actually seeing the ball. Now I'm positive that that's not the only issue that I uh, that is happening with my eyes. I still think that there is a little bit of a difference between my right and left eye where my right eye really isn't uh, as strong as the left one. So I'll still get that checked out, but it is a good uh, thing to know and it's gonna send me at least in the right direction so I can at least uh, have good practices like these. Um, this practice, I didn't really feel such an issue with my eyesight, so that really was a, a, a huge positive in my eyes. Uh, no pun intended <laughs> there. Um, but it was just a great practice. Uh, one, like I'm really trying to get my timing first. So you see like a lot of these smaller swings, especially on my backhand where I, I have a short backswing and kind of a, a abrupt follow through on some of these shots. Um, but I really need to just let the racket fly a little bit more because the more I do that, I end up being on time anyway because my racket's moving quicker uh, and I get better shape on the ball. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit higher, uh, a little bit more powerful, especially when I start to grunt on contact, which I need to remind myself to do from time to time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting and I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I also hit a couple two-handed backhands here. Uh, it's gross, it's not good technique. If you're a junior, I wouldn't recommend this. I would be actually very interested in having some other uh, YouTuber break down my technique for my two-handed. So uh, if you guys play two-handed or you have a YouTube channel or you're a good coach, you wanna uh, critique it a little bit, make a video on it. I'm, I'm very interested to see what you would have to say about that technique. Um, I have to stress that it only works sometimes for me. So uh, if you're planning on copying this technique, I would not recommend it because even for myself, it's only rarely that it actually goes where I want it to go. Um, but yeah, so when I was younger, I remember uh, my dad always wanted me to play one-handed and then one day he said, well, let's practice a two-handed every once in a while, you know, just in case. And so now I think that's a little bit of some holdover for my junior career uh, in case I get in danger and I don't have time to react with a proper one-handed technique. Sometimes I end up bunting the ball two-handed and it happens a lot, a lot on this hard court with how fast it is. Um, this practice was excellent though. We did a lot of rhythm uh, with cross courts at first. Then we did a little bit of some more volley practice. Uh, he did some volleys. I didn't record myself hitting volleys, uh, but we both uh, had spent a lot of time at the net, much longer than we normally do. And we did some like cross court ones, which was uh, a tough challenge for me, uh, but it was really, really rewarding. I think it was a great practice. Uh, and then we started to do some uh, more specific drills where we worked more on attacking. So I wanted to work on uh, attacking with my backhand down the line and trying to cover um, the result, whatever Marco's going to do. Uh, sometimes I decided to run around and hit forehands like here, but for the most part I wanted to hit backhands and try to cover the court the best I can. Uh, that was really tough for me. Uh, I need to work maybe a little bit more on my approach shots with my backhands, because I feel like I can hit it strong, but sometimes I'm just not confident enough to do it, and I end up like half swinging at the ball. The good news is I was covering quite well uh, for the most part, I would, uh, but one thing that I was doing that was kind of not great is sometimes I was hitting this ball down the line to attack and uh, then I would immediately take steps to the right like to cover the middle of the court instead of staying in front of the ball and when you do that you open up the down the line too much like here you get past because my first step initially is to the right so I need to really hold my ground a bit more and trust my speed like here I hold my ground a little bit more got a nice volley was able to put the point away but as long as I trust that I can get there in time and don't cheat over to one side I'm usually okay um, but otherwise, it was pretty good. It was a definitely a more specific type of practice. Uh, he decided he was gonna do his forehands to my backhand and he just absolutely steamrolled me. He was hitting amazing approach shots. I wasn't doing enough to defend. And on that slick court like that, if you don't uh, have your timing just right, you're not gonna have a good passing shot. So he really uh, took advantage of that, played some really nice shots, and he did exactly what he should do. 
Now we have some interesting stuff coming up in the pipeline. I just ordered uh, three sets of different Toro line uh, poly poly hybrid combinations that they offer. Uh, I'm really excited to try that out. Uh, as you know, I am with Selenko right now. Uh, they give me a little bit of a discount for my strings, but I'm always looking at uh, what potentially could be used uh, to upgrade the performance of my gear. And currently I really, really like the tour bite that I'm using, but just with like every string that I use normally, uh, it dies and that's just a, not, not a fault towards uh, Selenko or Torbite. It's just what happens to every string that I play with. Uh, not necessarily that the string breaks, but before that, like the snapback goes away. And then once that snapback goes away, I start to feel it in my elbow a little bit. So I need to replace the strings within two days, three days because I'm not getting offered any sort of comfort to my elbow. The spin drops dramatically. And then I notice also the pop, the speed off the racket really uh, goes down quite a bit. So I'm having to work quite a bit more, quite, uh, having to swing quite a bit faster to generate the same amount of topspin as a fresh set of string and the same amount of power as a fresh set of string. So I've heard that these strings tend to keep their snapback a little bit longer. So even if the tension goes down, if the snapback is still there, I think that would be a huge benefit for me since I do have a little bit more of a sensitive elbow and uh, I'm trying to find something that plays more consistently over the lifespan of the string. Currently I've had found nothing that does that. So if these tour line strings end up actually doing it, then uh, I'd be very, very excited for that. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All of that would be really, really helpful to the future of this channel. We're very, very close to a thousand, like 959 now. So please, please keep subscribing. We're just so close, so close. Also, you can become a member if you'd like to. It costs $2.99 per month. You'll have access to a members only Discord server where we talk about all things tennis. Uh, and I wanna say a huge thank you to uh, my current members. They'll be listed over here. You three have been awesome so far. I can't wait to see more of you here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.